All right. So it's really late. It's after one, but I have been meaning to do another art business video for um, my Monday art business schedule. And I'm a little running behind, but I just was thinking, what can I do for uh, my next art business tips video? And I just decided I'd just share some things I'm working on and uh, as far as marketing my art business. And thought maybe that would be helpful to someone. So what I'm doing is um, and I've mentioned this before and some people were surprised uh, I was at a I was doing a presentation at the Elmhurst Art Museum and some people asked me how much of my time I spent marketing and I told them about half of my time and they really were surprised and uh, so I just wanted to explain that a little bit more so when I say I spend half my time marketing, um, it's probably true, but it might not be what you think it is. Uh, so I still, there has to be this balance because you can't just market yourself and not paint because you have to be, I mean, we're artists, so we have to be doing the work. This isn't a certain kind of business where you know things are being made in China necessarily we have to keep making uh, our art and that's what we do we're artists so um, that's important it's important that we work on that but at the same time we still need to have uh, distribution so we have to get in front of people um, so uh, there's that balance always so um, one of the things I wanted to say is when I say I am 50% marketing, that does not mean I'm like cold calling people for four hours a day. Uh, what that means is usually it's kind of even my downtime, but I'm always, um, wherever I'm going, whether it's the grocery store or uh, a group meeting, uh, like a get together or church or something like that. I'm ready to, maybe not church, but I'm ready to just share what I do and, uh, see where that goes. And that's a lot of times, uh, how I get new sales is it's maybe not the first time you talk to someone, but it might be like, the 10th time or maybe they know someone and they refer you to someone and uh, so that's one thing that it's I consider part of my marketing but I'm just going about my daily life and so uh, it's kind of like I just have that in the back of my mind while I'm going through my life and you know it's not really I don't consider it even work so another thing I do though that would definitely be marketing is just working on building relationships and um, just writing letters to people, clients, contacts, and um, my peers, uh, supporting other artists and um, galleries things like that and uh, sometimes it's just touching bases maybe making a phone call uh, sometimes it's actually going to a gallery show or um, I mean I've gone to the country living show before because um, I have a gallery that uh, does was doing it sounds strange but I she does more than just uh, art she does it's earth angel studio she does like vintage items and life dolls things like that and so I've gone there and actually helped set up and put everything away and had a lot of fun with the other girls there uh, so then there's just uh, you know ordering business cards and flyers uh, designing new things for my store and um, all these videos so there's a, a lot to do and like I said it's after one so I'm 
done painting but I'm still uh, doing putting things out there so uh, the flip side of that would be the other 50% is my painting and art and I really feel like the marketing and the painting go hand in hand and like I said with the marketing that's also just coming up with new ideas this is like the non painting part of the business but you know you go out you meet new people and you maybe someone else's art inspires you or a book I'm reading inspires me even things that you know I, I try something new in the kitchen and that inspires me I've I've done desserts before and some of those are things that I ate or I saw or had that inspired me to paint a picture of it and uh, so things like that or even make it like a full-blown collection or story that I'm telling with my art uh, but at the same time I feel that it's really important to get that practice in there and get my um, keep improving my art and helping it to evolve and uh, grow so um, I do believe that if you're not going forward you're going backward that you know you really as an artist shouldn't just stay in this time capsule for too long and um, even if it feels comfortable and you're having success there that I've already seen it myself like that style gets tired everyone starts copying it and um, I don't know you just even if it's subtle you need to keep pushing yourself and uh, uh, like I said evolving so uh, yeah um, it's important that I get my hours in that's one of my biggest challenges is uh, getting that hours in for my painting because I it's not just the experience that it's the actual amount of work I'm putting out I can't just do one painting a month I um, you know maybe some artists can but I really believe that and I I'm not saying that some paintings might not, um, you know, they might take six months and that's okay, but uh, that doesn't mean that you're only working on it like one day a month. Um, I really feel like there needs to be probably, uh, to be a really good artist, you know, eight hours a day of painting a lot of the days. And then maybe step away. Um, that's I'm just throwing that number out. Um, but when you're really in the flow of uh, growing as an artist, I, it's just super important to be um, in your studio um, and actually working. I really struggle with uh, the painting eight hours a day. Even as a young child, my biggest struggle in life was sitting still in a classroom like a lot of kids nowadays. That was huge for me. And um, so, I mean, I've done more work where I've been in a cubicle all day. And as an adult, I survived, but I didn't thrive. And um, even now, uh, if I could do something where I wasn't, if I could do some sort of art where I didn't have to sit still, I would be much happier. I do like the art, but uh, I really, really have to wear myself out, it seems, before I can just sit still for a long time. So it helps me if I get a workout in in the morning or, uh, I do a lot of housework when I first wake up because I like a really clean house. So uh, even though my studio isn't always the cleanest, uh, I like the rest of the house clean. So uh, yeah, I I try to get um, my life in order and then uh, get my ex my exercises. I have to do that before I 
start painting usually because or else I'm just irritable and my painting goes really bad I've noticed um, and I can't even sit for more than like 30 minutes so I it's better if I get all of these other things out of my way and that brings me to another point which is just it's really good to know how you function and what works for you because there might be some people who are just fine to wake up and then you know start painting for eight hours a day um, that's not me um, I can do that but it's usually later in the day like in the afternoon I can kind of settle down um, just the way I'm wired um, let's see what else can I think about uh, as far as marketing in general Well, I'm reading a book now. I think I showed it before and it's right here. Let me get it out. It's about branding and it's probably a little more intense than I need. Uh, so I think it's some sort of advertising company and they show about how important um, branding can be. And, um, I'm not sure how important this is for us as artists, but it is important to, uh, you know, have uh, for our work, you know, if we have a business card or something you're wanting, you're going to want to have, uh, I don't think it hurts to have your own logo, uh, things like that, that kind of identify you to others. And even just some consistency uh, with your online presence, business cards, things like that. So that's something I'm working on a little bit. And uh, I really struggle with social media because um, I sell a lot of art online. And uh, I, I love that. But I'm really wanting to become more honestly of a private person. And I would love it if in the future I were um, mostly not online. And I don't want anyone to think I'm going away anytime soon. Um, I'm not, but I think what I probably do is maybe just become even more professional and keep, um, you know, like at some point, I'm in my home now, um, you know, just work from a separate studio and keep it all business. And I think it would actually, um, I'd be of better service to you because it would be, um, instead of me uh, baking and cooking all the time, I'd really be uh, more of a teacher and um, giving, you know, a lot more um, art related videos and, uh, I've thought about podcasts, even, um, things that have to do with art instead of just getting to know Angela and her family. And that has been fun. And I think that's great for right now. But, um, as my channel evolves, that's kind of where I'm thinking of going is to more strictly tutorials and just better quality, Right now I'm using my iPhone. I do have a camera, but I don't have a good tripod for it. So um, I've had to put it on boxes and things. And honestly, I have the iPhone 7 Plus and it's got a really good phone um, or camera in it. And it's working pretty good. So I, I haven't felt a huge need to uh, get more. But I do think a microphone would be good. Uh, to just improve my sound and maybe some studio lighting because um, actually right now it's late at night and I actually have a light here and I just took a piece of my mat board here to use to bounce the light off. <laughs> and that's why I'm sitting in the corner here um, <laughs> to make it. Otherwise, I think if I took this off, let's see what I'd look like. It does kind of, um, I think, help 
fill in this side of my face. But I don't have any fancy studio equipment or anything like that. So, oh, I definitely see on my shirt when I bring this back. The um, phone, um, I don't know a lot about photography, but it does seem that the my phone uh, does some of the white, I don't even know what it's called, but um, helps kind of balance out the whites and so forth. So that's good. Anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, just trying to evolve. Um, I would just say there's also a fine line between pushing yourself and growing too fast and just being patient. And right now I would say I'm in a place where I just feel like I need to be patient. If anything, slow down. Um, I'm trying to make sure I get enough sleep and that... Uh, first thing first is take care of my customers so um, make sure that my packages are going out and um, on time and um, that there's no problems there and uh, what else and just taking care of my health and my happiness and then um, I can focus on my art. And I know that whenever I get really clingy and desperate, like, and sometimes even when I start pushing myself, uh, this has always been my experience. They say haste makes waste. And that always happens to me. I'll show you uh, one thing that happened. Uh, if you remember this show where I showed how I painted these shoes, well, I was uh, doing some packages on the floor. Instead of cleaning off my table and standing up and doing packages properly, I decided I would just spread them out. I do like to work on the floor and uh, just uh, work on my packages I was shipping on the floor. But as I was cutting the packing tape, I uh, cut my lace on my shoe. So that's what I mean about haste makes waste is I literally, I didn't even notice it until I untied my shoe and the shoe lace was just lying on the floor. And I'm um, like, what? And it was cut like super, now it's all frayed, but it was just like a clean cut and I'm like, Cause I was like, how did that happen? It was like six hours later when I noticed and I'm like, I cut my, the loop of my, uh, shoelace when I was cutting or shipping my packages, but it was still tied. So it all stayed together. So, uh, yeah, those kind of things. Um, you just gotta do things right. It, it's just important to clean your house and have things organized. Um, there was an artist I read a book about his biography. I think it might have been um, John Winsler Homer. I think it was him and how he loved to have a super neat studio to the point that it would kind of drive some people crazy that he'd have everything almost like OCD, like super organized before he could start. But, and I've been kind of the other way where I... Growing up with five kids in the home, I think I got used to some chaos and being able to function in some chaos. But there's just a lot of virtue in having organization and cleanliness and uh, slowing down um, and doing things right. It's like the foundation of a house, you know, or you know, having a really unhealthy body, but you put some lipstick and nail polish on it, but you have like cancer inside you and you're like 400 pounds. That's, you know, it's better to just clean everything out and, um, you know, whether it's your house or your health or your art business. <laughs> and I'm trying not to be philosophical here or like preachy, but just, from my own experience. These are things I've personally experienced. I mean, I haven't been 400 pounds, but I have gone without sleep before and gotten sick. And 
things like that. And I know that when you do, um, when you are stressed out as far as weight and so forth, uh, that's when you start having weight problems sometimes because um, you start getting more cortisol in your body and you can't lose weight. So uh, yeah, it's all good and it's all important. So uh, yeah, um, hap healthy artists are happy artists and uh, Cleanliness is good for art too. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon.